only about seven pages in the whole chapter. Oh, really? Wait, yeah, yeah. Simulation isn't very long. It's just about like basically saying, oh, what kind of bits of information are useful for simulating? How would you then repetitively do that? You know, repeating the samples several times with different probabilities. Um, and also just mentioning how it's useful. Yeah. 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 I guess I was able to read it. Um, hey, Kevin. Hey, how's it going? Uh, I'm Kevin, just gonna... I had no idea you were such a modeling genius. You're like, wow. You're just. I, what? What are you talking you're such about? A tidy data modeling genius. No, I'm not. <laughs> I don't know where you're getting that impression. But I'll, I'll take the I don't the compliment. No, well, your uh, Twitch stream, I mean, like you'll sound like you know what you're talking about. Oh, uh, thank you. You mean with the stream I did or the? Uh... Yeah, I didn't have a chance to watch sliced, but I watched oh, yeah. the stream and yeah, you're oh, you're yeah. The, you're like up there. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> um. Yeah, I was able to get through this chapter. I actually started reading six a little bit too. Um, so I agree. It wasn't, the simulation stuff wasn't too bad. Um, I don't know. It, it feels like a lot of stuff that is kind of, um, it's kind of typical, uh, you know, with sampling and it was just kind of different conditions for sampling, right? Like I don't, I don't know. I didn't um, get get a whole lot of new stuff out of it. I guess um, I don't know. Is there anything in particular you wanted to talk about? I mean, I I thought it was just generally trying to get the user used to, um, sorry, the reader used to the idea that simulation can be quite useful if you've got certain parameters, and then you can build up uh, other model, other samples with. A certain amount of data so you can mm -hmm. predict what you might expect a whole distribution to look like and that can be useful for other areas of modeling later on mm -hmm. uh, and that's just general thing i got from it i mean in my own company we um we kind of use simulation in order to pick up uh, derivatives um in order to um, predict say promotional prices and stuff so that's where it, where i think you know it can be useful Mm -hmm. um, but besides, you know, but in the actual simulation chapter, it, I think it's just to get people used to the idea that you can simulate data and it's okay to do so, as opposed to faking some data because you can bother to do some research. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I never. Also, I never used the um, the median absolute deviation before. Um, it seems like Gelman is pretty into that that metric. Um, mm. I was looking later on, and it seems like the, the that that metric is returned on the like the in the R stan arm uh, package, like when you get a, a model fit mad SD. Um, I guess it's better for. Uh, I thought it was mean absolute uh, deviation. Was it not? Or it's it's median, I think. Oh, it's median. Uh, oh, okay. Median absolute deviation. Yeah. I think I think he uses that because if you've got a skew, a skewed population in some respects, if gotcha. you've got like a good population, it the median will be in the same place as the mean. As the mean. Whereas right. if there's a skew, then typically speaking, you would end up taking the median anyway because it will be the better placed out of the central tendencies. Mm -hmm. well, that's how I. That's how I would understand oh, yeah. it. Or guess, really. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Um, I'm just reading, rereading some of this stuff. Yeah, it's been a little while. I did. I did run some of these simulations, um, but. I can't say that it really struck me as anything more than just creating distributions, really. Yeah, I think it's just neat in general. Anytime you can uh, demonstrate a statistical property uh, using simulation without like without having to like 
derive it mathematically. You just kind of run it and you get to see the kind of tendency that the law like gets at, but you don't actually have to, you just, you just run a simulation, you know? Um, I don't know. I, f I feel like it makes things a little bit more intuitive. Um, but I know they're like preparing us to do stuff with sampling for the posterior and things like that um, for, for prediction, so. Um, yeah, yeah uh, it's, it's almost two weeks since I read this. But a lot of it seems to have disappeared out of my head. <laughs> yeah. And he just talks about bootstrapping, which we're probably familiar with. Um, yeah, in different situations where, like, in a time series, you'd want to, you know, um, uh, think about uh, sampling like with respect to time so that you're like if you have a holdout set or whatever um, it's later in time so, I don't know I, I feel like this chapter doesn't I don't know it's not much else I guess than what we've talked about yeah that's kind of how I felt about it, really. I felt, I felt like it was just like getting used to simulating an art and getting used to the idea of, as you say, building the posterior. Which in itself is a really useful tool to do. Yeah. Did you guys, so you guys talked about chapter four last time? Um, we did. Um, we went over quite, went over it in quite a bit of detail. Um, we didn't really get to the very last couple of pages, um, um, what we tended to get stuck on, uh, well, you know, talked about in great detail was things about, um, was it what is the actual confidence in tool uh, and error and how useful it is, and then also degrees of freedom. Um, was it switch drawing point? I thought the stuff around like uh, like the different algebra with like um, like combining two distributions like other like, you know and trying to summarize the the you know the confidence interval or whatever like the reminder of the different ways that like the standard error formula, for instance, is mm. is modified for two distributions. Um, uh oh, yeah. I don't know. I feel like that kind of stuff just doesn't. I always forget things like that. So, yeah, just... I mean, it's pretty cool. Um, mm -hmm. I th I thought the confidence interval was a really interesting point as well. You know, understanding what the confidence interval means, which is like, you know, you collect your data, how sure are you that you actually have the true population mean inside it? Mm -hmm. well, you have 95 and 50% confidence intervals. And that, um, that realistically speaking, that's quite a wide variance in most cases when you're drawing inference and you're trying to infer the difference between two populations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah, I uh, I also had it wasn't that familiar with the standard error estimate for proportions. Um, mm. But I don't know. It kind of boggles my mind that you can estimate that without uh, any kind of estimate of variance from the. Um, I don't know. I need to. I would need to look into that more because it's only the square root of the, like, kind of the yes proportion. And then the number of samples, like with those are the two, like main variables there. I don't know. Mm. Yeah, I, I want I I need to look into that more because like I I wonder what uh, assumptions it makes about that distribution in order to be able to do that. Uh, I don't think that's necessarily a bad approach. Um, I I I tend to use proportional goodness of fit as a mm. means of. Um, comparing different, for instance, items in real life, because it's better than using, say, 
correlational di- correlations. So you know how most people use correlations in order to work out similarity. Um, mm-hmm. In itself, isn't necessarily always a measure of similarity. I tend to use yeah. proportional measures in order to work out, say, if two products um, uh, cannibalize or uh, promote each other, that kind of thing. Because it tends mm-hmm. to work better in time series than correlational values do, particularly mm-hmm. when there are variances in the um, in like different um, reg- regression factors that affect those things. Uh, they're more stable over time. Um, but I can see why, so what I'm trying to say is I can see why the proportional metric might actually be more valuable, more mm-hmm. valuable in trying to understand uh, confidence intervals and error. Because mm-hmm. they're quite stable. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, I think in general, I, I read uh, a lot of the um, statistical rethinking book. Um, I was like trying to do, trying to get up on the Bayesian stuff a while ago. And um, the thing I really like about that and about this book too, and I guess about the Bayesian approach in general is that you're starting from like this broad sweeping, like like conceptual like level of like all the different types of distributions that are possible. You know, like all the different ways, that, all the different types of like data you're collecting and and what distributions are appropriate to represent those. And then you're kind of like working your way into modeling. Mm-hmm. Um, and I really like that. Cause like, like, re- like whenever I was taught statistics it was always, you know, like a Gaussian distribution and like, you know there was just, there was no way of, 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 of uh, having any sort of agency and like, and like modifying that model. Like it was always just like this is kind of the standard thing you all about always will have to do. And like, um, I don't know, like it, it doesn't, this seems like a lot more, uh, like a, you, it forces you to think a lot more about the underlying process that like generated your data. Um, and I just really like that. I really appreciate that. Yeah, it's really cool. Uh, it, it's it's difficult to un- it's difficult to get your head around in parts. I think the actual mathematics behind it, people say, is simpler in some respects, but I often find it harder. Mm-hmm. But I think we mentioned the week is one of the things to focus on. Really, is the equations and what they actually mean because it actually helps you with understanding the theory. Mm-hmm. Right. Are you talking about anything in particular with regards well, to equations, or uh... it's a bit like the uh, well, it's a bit like as you mentioned about the uh, the equation for the not necessarily the one for the proportional differences or combining the standard errors. Mm-hmm. That one, yeah, that one really is important. But like, um, say the sampling distribution, the sample mean deviation, chi squared distribution, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, because. It's just kind of like well, you look at these symbols and it's like, well, what does that mean? But actually, when you start looking, when you start comprehending what it's trying to do there, mm-hmm. of not just what it's trying to do, but how to reconstruct it. Because mm-hmm. then you, when you get to more complex algebra later, later on, it's going to be easier. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, it's funny because like I, I've tried to get better at like really reading the the like. Um, mathematical notation like in these in these books and I have to like take a deep breath honestly before I do it like like I I have this like visceral response this like emotional response to it that's like that's like I don't know what it is like some kind of thing related to school and I don't know like like I wasn't bad at I was like pretty good at math but like I don't know I I have to like get over that first and then I like read it carefully and like try to like piece it apart and um you know I don't know. Like, I, 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 sorry go ahead no oh, i i think of it like cooking instructions mm-hmm. like you know it would be better often they say oh you know blah blah you know p of x of t a alpha blah blah you know you know if you hear them talking through it it's really annoying because actually what you want is really a bullet point list of what does each element here represent mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then i can understand that and right then, then how does that cause variation in one to the other you know then yeah. so tell me a bullet point list of 
what each element means. And, that, and he kind of does do that in the book to some extent. They kind of do explain what each piece means mm -hmm. and then say how they relate to each other. Mm -hmm. But it is hard. It's it, like there's no doubt that it is a bit more difficult, but I yeah. think that by reading yeah, it, it does tend to help yeah, conceptualize yeah. what it's trying to do. Yeah. And, and yeah. there's a focus here on the distributions and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. just understanding what is a distribution and how do we wait or change it and how can we be confident of that what we have is what yeah. we uh, should be looking at. You know, that, that's kind of really the goal of this bit here, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think the other thing about it too is like really getting deep into the different types of distributions is that it forces you to dig into your data deeper, you know? Like you, you can't just like blindly do stuff because uh, each each piece of these models is like a, a choice about the assumptions you're making and, uh, you know, what, what, the, what the distribution looks like. Um, I, when, when I first, for one, when you guys were, Uh, Kent, your mic's gone off. Thanks. Um, you mentioned that you wanted to do some exercises, at least, or some of the stuff in tiny models. It was mm -hmm. like an idea. Um, I'm excited about that because I think chapter six would be like the first chance to do that. Uh, it starts to do like generalized linear models, um, stand GLM, and I feel like you should be, you can do that in tidy models, right? I haven't tried. I mean, you can use Stan as an engine. Um, I think it should be pretty similar. Yeah, I think it's good to practice six. It's, it helps you to understand what you're actually doing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, and that, that really is the goal here for us, I suppose, which is kind of understand what the theory of what you're doing and then actually being able to apply it because obviously base R is not really going to, well, it's going to be very good for that, is it? Like, yeah. I don't even understand what, what the MAD is. <laughs> Probably it's a very important concept. I'm pretty sure they mentioned that earlier on, actually. Oh, MAD? Oh, that's what I was saying before, the mean, mean absolute... Or the median, sorry, median yeah. abs, median absolute deviation. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I have a feeling that that is a particular, like, output from this RSAN ARM package. Um, uh, I'd be curious if, like, tidy or uh, what's it called? What's the? There's like a Bayesian extension for tidy models. I forget yeah, what there it's is. called. Uh, I, I can't remember. Uh, I've seen someone asking questions about it on the Slack. Um, and it has slightly different output, which is kind of off-putting, which, you know, because it's like, you know, when you do a linear model or regression, it's always got the same kind of, like, information coming out. So it's always mm -hmm. a bit off-putting when you, someone does a different model, does a same modeling system, but has different output. Yeah, that's weird. So I see tidy posterior as part of tiny models. Let me just look at uh, GitHub. Um, was it something that uh, uh, the guy we've talked about a bunch made um, the time series guy? Kurtz. I feel like I, I feel like I saw that. Solomon Kurtz. Sorry, he's Solomon Kurtz. He, he's done everything in time series, I think. No, the. Um, the business uh, uh, guy. Um, oh, right. So um, a guy on his, uh, one of the people who is in his group, um, mm -hmm. Alberto, I can't remember what his second name is. Um, he's basically done the, done a load of like um, work on tidy time series. Sorry, on um, uh, Bayesian time series. Oh, okay. Um, so it's time, time series based stuff. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, it's all time, it's all time series. Um, Time series. It's it's pretty cool because he's got Bayesian structurals in there now. Mm. Um, oh, really? That's cool. Yeah, yeah, because that that means you don't necessarily have to rely on um, uh, well, profit kind of uses Bayesian structurals, and um, some of the other systems do too. 
Um, but I don't, I don't necessarily always like using profit. It's a bit hit and miss, to be honest. Um, mm -hmm. but, but if you wanted to just use the Bayesian structural part yourself and then um, supplement that with a different modeling system like XDBoost or something along those lines, you might actually get something better out of it. Yep. I mean, it would be interesting also, like if if the if some of those examples in the book aren't um, directly like available uh, via some kind of like modeling function, like we could create our own uh, like custom custom. Uh, I forget what they're called in tiny models. I mean, the have recipes, but the modeling part, whatever it's called, it's like custom model uh, uh, engine. Engine, yeah. Uh, oh, engine, engine. Oh, engine is what you use. Um, like I know, I, I know in like scikit learn, it's like uh, transformers and estimators. I just want to say an estimator, but mm. anyway, um, yeah. So like, like we could do that too, and just use the back end as or the R stand arm as the, you know, as the engine. Basically, um, that could be interesting. But I'm excited for these next chapters because it's like I, you actually get to start modeling and doing doing Bayesian, Bayesian stuff. Yeah, I think that'd be really cool. Um, so shall we shall we just shall we just move on to the next chapter next week? You mean? Uh, yeah, I'm okay with that. Um, I, I've gotten through a bunch of it. Um, Oh, actually, maybe it's not even that long. I think I might have gone through all of it. Uh, it's like nine pages, ten pages. Yeah, the the regression to the mean discussion in the in this next chapter. Oh, the simulation really, was really a really good. easy read. The simulation chapter was a really easy read. I think I got through like seventy five percent of it already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think like we were saying that it's it's mostly like kind of just learning how to use the sample functions and like the, the random distribution and the random sampling for distributions uh, functions um, that are like in base R. Uh, so. Let's check quickly. Uh, what are we on chapter six? Ah. <laughs> so, so do we want to do that next week? Just do chapter six. And w were you saying that you didn't you didn't think we should do presentations and just like talk? Um, it seems like you were, you guys were doing the like the exercises before, right? Uh, well, like working through those. Um, not, kind of, but not. It hasn't really worked out that well, to be honest. Um, <laughs> We've had a lot of people drop out and so like the burden has been more on like one or two people you know to do all mm -hmm. of that so i think it's a really good suggestion not to focus on presentations but do it more you know either open up a website or something just to even get that discussion going yeah because the yeah. chapters are fairly dense and so i think that should be the focus that makes sense to me Okay, I mean, so who's we, taking on chapter six? I because I can do that if no one is. Oh, it, it, it yeah. I mean, I'm 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 happy to do chapter six. Okay. Okay. Um, I mean, re realistically speaking, I'm probably just going to knit together. Um, uh, what's it, Kurtzman's piece, and then just add in any few additional points that I can take out of it. Um, yeah, this should be a, a, this should be fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't, I don't see any problems in that. It sounds good. Thank you, guys. Sorry about that. Yeah. Well, you know, no need to, no need to apologize. Um, you know, it, we have, we, you know, we're a group of people. You know, we've only got so much time. Um, you know, particularly with our day jobs, and yeah. also more, more importantly, it's like you know, reality is, you know, we can't help it if people drop out. Or, or, yep. or, 
you know, life gets in the way, doesn't it? Yeah, I think I think we stick with it. The, the next few chapters are going to get pretty exciting from like a, a nerd perspective. Uh, so, so uh, I don't know. I think, and then I think then we can start bringing in like interesting data sets and like put our own twist on it. Um, so, uh, I think it'll, I think it'll be good. I mean, honestly, it's the only way I'll like go chapter by chapter in this book. So, with a group like like this, so. <laughs> yeah, I think I agree. I, I mean, I think the biggest problem is with a book like this is really hard to, to get through on your own. You just need other people to talk to, even if, like, for instance, because I often like read something and then my ideas aren't quite right on it, and then someone will say, "Oh no, that's this instead," because it's that ever so slight difference in nuance sometimes that you just miss when you're trying to understand a bit of theory, and that you know you just need a group of people together. It's a bit like the way how they used to recite the Buddhist uh, texts, isn't it? You know what they do is mm-hmm. they get together and they'd kind of uh, they'd go through the uh, is it the chant or something for the for the text, and then they'd correct each other as they uh, recited it. Or something mm-hmm. like that. And, um, I always thought that's a very interesting way of reading um, the book, but mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. it also works in real life, particularly when you're trying to discuss ideas and also more importantly conceptualizing your own head you know what does some what does that information really mean yeah yeah i totally i totally agree just like talking through you know your own understanding and explanation of things um is really helpful for building understanding um i was gonna say something else and i forgot oh yeah i was i saw this uh, related to this i saw this discussion on i think i was on twitter the other day about like, like how in different fields, there's like a set of like fundamental things that if you know really well, like you can like do a lot, you know? And like, and like, I feel like I've taken like many passes at this, this type of like content and like I've gotten bits and pieces along the way. And like each time uh, it, I, could, I see more and more how it like makes everything else so much easier, you know? Like I, you know, you take a stats class and then like, you like, you know, you do something for a few years and you like read another book and like, it's just, I don't know. I just see it as like all these different passes at a similar thing, you know, and then you like get a slightly different thing each time. Um, and uh, anyway, I, I felt the same way about uh, like, I was starting this uh, this uh, probability class, um, this like edX class, this guy, mm-hmm. Joe Blitz, Blitzstein, I think. Um, yeah, and like, uh, is awesome. And I started doing it and I was like, and I, I just, I, I don't know, it opened up a lot of things for me. Like I never, like I, I'd never taken a probability class uh, and I haven't finished it, but, um, but it's, it's, it's really good. And it's, it has a lot of like nice animations and stuff. Um, um, but, uh, but then I was like, oh, like, like Bayesian statistics is just like the or Bayes rule is just like the product rule. Um, you know, and, and anyway, it just, and, and then people started saying things about like vaccination rates and stuff. And like, like, what's your chance of, of getting, uh, like if you're in a room of 10 people or whatever, and like, and you just like start to be able to answer all these, uh, I don't know. I, I, it's just kind of like one of those things that like unlocked a lot of, a lot of ideas and statistics and like, uh, solving real world problems, I guess. Um. I don't know, I need to finish that course. Well, I'll say that I, I think you're absolutely right. Like between probability and linear algebra and the fact that I was such a loser in both just because it was so badly taught in my engineering classes. Like I just really, it was so didactic and I didn't get it. And now I'm having to redo it. And it explains a lot of stuff in statistics, like just having a solid base in, in, in probability, I think is uh, goes a big way because it's everything is like distributions and density functions and things like that. So, and of course, like you can't get away from data science and math matrix and matrices and all of that is like linear algebra functions. So like between the two, instead of focusing on calculus, I think those two are like literally things that I've had to go back and, and redo and I just don't have enough time to. So I'm just like, got a whole bunch of courses open at the same time and haven't finished any of them. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, t- I totally agree. Um, yeah, I, I actually paid for the certificate for that class. So I need to, it's like an unlimited amount of time. Like you can finish it whenever, but uh, I need to finish it. Um, 
it's hard. It's like, it's not easy. Like I wouldn't say it's intuitive, but like, uh, but like each like minute you invest, like pays back a lot. Yeah. You know? Um, so anyway, I have a meeting in like two minutes. Um, but, uh, I'm like on my, on my lunch break or whatever you call it. So. It's good to talk. Um, it's certainly it's certainly a lot to learn and you know i i completely agree i mean i'm pro i'm much earlier in my bayesian um bayesian journey and you know i just want to i was hoping that this class would probably help me to get on down the line there really mm -hmm. and you know, every, every little bit you do helps isn't it so it's always good to have other people around you because every time like you say every time you go over something you learn a bit better mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah totally um, yeah, I feel like I'm pretty early. I consider myself pretty early with Bayesian statistics too. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, me anyway. too. Uh, anyway, best to let you go um, because, uh, you know, work never stops, does it? No. Oh, maybe I should cut out this at the end of this, uh, out of the recording. <laughs> Whatever. doesn't matter. Yeah. Anyway, great to see you, Kent. Um, All right. Yeah, you too. Uh, it's yeah, good seeing you, seeing you both of you. All right. Yeah. All see right. Well, see you next week. Bye. See you probably too.